Production processes in the 21st century are more advanced than ever before, and they're developing exponentially all the time. Incorporating new techniques and machinery, which make things possible that we wouldn't have even thought about a hundred years ago. Some production methods are still much the same as ever though too, but either way, there's plenty of things made in ways you won't believe. Amazing! Number 10. Camo on Helmets Some countries still use textile for covers for their military helmets, but more and more nowadays, a process called hydro dipping is used where helmets are tipped into a pool of camouflage dye. Many of us may have used transfers when making model airplanes like Airfix models, or for wargaming miniatures, and this works in a similar way. It's almost a giant transfer. A large pool is covered with a camouflage transfer, which is basically a thin printed film. This dissolves partially in the water until the dye separates and then either by hand or by machine, helmets are dipped into the water so the dye comes off on their surfaces in a uniform and clean manner. This technique is ideal for patterns like camouflage, which aren't easy to stencil onto surfaces using paint. Number nine, mushrooms. Our food is manufactured on a huge scale. Millions of acres of land are dedicated to farming worldwide and most fruit and veg is still grown traditionally in the soil or hydroponically. But one thing we don't often think about is mushrooms. Mushrooms are grown on an industrial scale too though, and mushroom farmers have refined their production in order to really churn out thousands upon thousands of them for market. Mushrooms grow in fertile, damp, and dark conditions. And firstly, farmers have to produce the perfect compost for manure, gypsum, and ammonia. The idea is to emulate that danky woodland environment as well as possible and improve it where possible for maximum yield. The compost is put through many heating processes, where microorganisms flourish in the compost to enrich it and create mushroom-friendly nutrients. Once it's prepared, the compost is mixed with wheat, which is inoculated with mycelium, mushroom spores. The mushrooms grow quickly and draw nutrients from the soil and water from the compost. Mushrooms don't need light, just a lot of air and water. It isn't long before you have a massive crop of mushrooms ready for picking. Number 8. Wire, Springs, and Chains Wires, springs, and chains are just some of the many, many things we make out of cylindrical metal. Once upon a time, all kinds of metal wiring were extremely hard to produce. They'd have to be hand-drawn and molded into shape before being cooled. Now we have built powerful machines to automate the process on industrial scales, which is just as well given how many of these items we take for granted in everyday life. To make things like chains, wires, and springs, we must first select a high ductile metal. High ductility means the metal can easily be drawn into wires, and some metals like platinum and gold can be drawn out into wires so thin that they measure under a micron across. In fact, amazingly, just one ounce of gold can be drawn into a wire 1,250 miles long at the thickness of one micron. Once drawn out into wires, machines push the metal into the shape needed using awesome multi-stage processes. Spring are wound up using machines which push wires against certain angled pieces of metal to direct the wire. Chains are clamped together using hydraulic presses and chicken wire is intricately wound into shape. Number seven, prawn crackers. Just like bottles, prawn crackers start life as something a lot smaller. The process is a lot simpler though and the results are more delicious. Prawn crackers are authentically made from a root vegetable called tapioca, which is rolled with prawns. But commercially available crackers are often formed using many different types of flour and starch, which are combined with prawn and other seafood flavorings. The ingredients are mixed and they're formed into small tablets and then you just stick them in some hot oil, wait a few seconds and voila, a fluffy, white and crunchy prawn cracker forms. It's cool to watch them expand in the oil, and deep frying them is what makes them infamously calorific. Number six, sweets. Sweets come in so many different shapes and sizes, and when you think about it, some are incredibly complex. They have many different parts, all different colors, with so many layers. Sweets are made in many different ways, but many, including taffy, are made using boiled sugar, which is then cooled into massive sheets and then aerated on stretching machines to make it light and bubbly. Stretching machines pull the candy about until it's uniform and soft. They're hypnotic to watch. If it wasn't aerated, it'd be rock solid and harder to eat. These hard candies are known as rock and are often long cylindrical sweets. Sweets like rock are made using lots of rolled layers of different colored layers. The initial roll is huge and smaller tubes are pulled off of it and then rolled into cylinders, which can be dissected when cooled. Number five, 
hot dogs. Here's something that you may regret watching if you love your hot dogs, one of us. The paste found inside hot dogs is tasty, but when it comes fresh out of the machine, it's seriously gross. It certainly bears no resemblance to meat. It's squirted inelegantly into the hot dog's outer coat, and then the ends are tied, and they join their mates ready for packaging. Number four, ice cream. Ice cream is delicious and colorful. Many types of ice cream are full of different layers with toppings and extra flavors. Just like sweets, ice cream production has been refined to a fine art, and it is certainly very arty watching Vianetta ice cream in particular come off its fantastically designed production line. Vianetta is like lasagna. It has a base, multiple layers, and rich sauces in between. It starts off with chocolate and sauce, and then ripples of ice cream are layered gloriously on top before the top layer extra sauce, and ice cream is applied. It doesn't take long to build something complex and delicious, and takes even less time to eat it. The less beautiful but humble ice cream sandwich has its own cool production method though. The wafers are pushed together from either side of a squirter, and then ice cream is sandwiched between them. Looks cozy, even though it'd be a little cold. They're then rolled off the production line, ready to package. Number three, two liter bottle. When you think about it, bottles are exceptionally tough. Breaking one is very, very hard, and that's a damn good thing because imagine the hassle it'd be if we didn't have plastic bottles and had to rely on glass for containing all of our liquids. Bottles are made from PET, polyethylene terephthalate, a plastic which has ultra-high tensile strength, crystal clear transparency, flexibility, and it's lightweight too. They're safe, flexible to different shapes, cheap, waterproof, and hard wearing to sunlight. They tick every box for a fine quality modern material. So how is this plastic shaped into bottles? The PET is first heated until it's a liquid and placed in a mold and at this stage, it's a long tube. This is injection molding where the plastic is squirted into a preformed bottle shaped mold. This tube of PET is called a paracin, resembling a mini bottle and is then positioned into another more bottle shaped mold where a rod called a mandrel is inserted filling the preformed mold with highly pressurized air which blows it up into a larger bottle. Big bottles start of life as small bottles. Small bottles start of life as even smaller ones. Number 2. Old Spice Commercial Green screen, digital FX, CGI, there's all sorts of smoke and mirrors in movie and TV production these days, and we just assume that anything anyone can dream of can be replicated realistically, but watching the production of this advert is incredibly interesting. This Old Spice commercial looks like it's all digitally manipulated at first, but it's actually a brilliantly executed one take, which has a lot of physical objects in it and only minimal CGI. Now you might need to watch this a few times, it's hard to follow. It just all happens so quickly, but basically, the set design is incredibly well orchestrated with moving parts, like sheets of glass to simulate the actor being underwater, a piano, and a fake dog. Not smoke and mirrors then, just wires and pulleys. Number 1. Ink Color as a whole is such an awesome concept. We can not only see in Technicolor, but also produce thousands of different colors with ingredients and over time. These techniques have developed to allow us access to the most vibrant, striking, and bright colors possible on Earth. Ink is used for so many things, from products to books, packaging to clothing, and though we take it for granted, inks are made using complex methods that have taken hundreds of years to refine. Raw powders used in ink today are mostly synthetic, but formerly, they were made from many weird and wonderful things, from urine for yellow to shellfish for purple. The Romans Deep Purple, named Tyrian Purple, is a dye extracted from the Murex shellfish. The powders are mixed with special varnishes, which act as mediums, and many chemicals are added to provide qualities to ink, like water resistance and stickiness to certain surfaces. Ink making requires the knowledge of many chemical interactions. It certainly isn't just about mixing colors. Which one impressed you the most? Do you know of any other amazing manufacturing techniques? Let me know in the comments section down below. Also, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe and click that bell icon to stay updated. Thanks for watching.